do is show you how to solve this problem. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see what the solution makes. So first of all, when I do a problem, I always want to make sure that um, I can uh, simplify it as much as possible. So what I notice I can do is I can uh, use my distributive property to simplify the right side. So I get 8q plus 12 equals 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 2q is going to give me 8q. Now there's something very important that I notice here, is I notice the left side is exactly the same as the right side. And that's going to become very difficult for me to solve, because if I use my uh, regular operations, let's even just say I wanted to um, get rid of my, my constant, so I subtract the 12 on both sides. Well, those both cancel out, I'm left with 8q equals 8q. And if I divide by 8 on both sides, I get q is equal to q. So therefore, my variable doesn't equal exactly one number. And then I say, well, I'm used to like x equals 5 or x equals negative 2. Now I have a variable equals a variable. So what does that mean? Well, let's pretend q equals 3. Then 3 would equal 3. And is that true? Yeah, of course it's always true. What about if I did 4? Is equal to 4. Negative 5 is equal to negative 5. Therefore, it doesn't matter what value I put in for my variable, it's always going to be true. Therefore, this equation has infinitely many solutions. So there's not just one solution that makes this equation true that we're used to solving for. There's infinitely many. It does not matter what number I put in for x or q in this matter, my equation will always be true.